Hi there. As we head into fall allergy season, I feel like it's important that we talk about asthma. People always think about their stuffy nose and their watery eyes and their sneezing, but it can be a major trigger for asthma and pretty much everybody in my household has it. So we're going to talk about it today. Asthma is a two pronged problem. You have underlying inflammation from whatever triggers, we'll discuss those in a minute, and then you have bronchoconstriction. The airways are made of smooth muscle cells, similar to the cells that make up the gastrointestinal tract and the ureters, and all they can do when they're angry is squeeze. But we need those tubes to stay open so that we can get air. So both of these different causes are important to address. Asthma is an incredibly common problem in the United States and is really underdiagnosed. People don't want to be labeled as having asthma, so they'll say, well, I get bronchitis every time every year at about this time of year. And if it happens every year when ragweed season rolls around or every year when the trees are growing in the spring, you might actually have asthma. If this is not addressed appropriately, long term, it can lead to decreased lung function and remodeling of the lung tissue, which means your lungs essentially turn into scars and scars don't breathe. So we wanna take care of those spongy lungs while you're young and vital so that you have all the function you need moving forward. Asthma also contributes significantly to days off work, days off school, and days out of activities, and just a lower level of enjoyment of life in general because asthma keeps people from doing things that they don't think they can accomplish. So let's figure out today what we can do, what our triggers might be, and then set off to improve things. Why don't you show me how your inhaler works? Common things that trigger asthma, number one would be allergies. So whether that is mold or dust mites or pollens, other things like that, it may be worth getting allergy tested if you have that to a significant degree. Also, there are environmental triggers that can make things flare up, whether that is smoke, um, either just environmental or cigarette smoke, um, stress, depression and anxiety, um, barometric pressure fronts can have a vasomotor effect here, and certain scents can either trigger allergies or asthma. In addition, some people can have their reactive airways triggered either by extreme heat or extreme cold. We would say probably more often it's the cold that does that, but I have patients that report it's the other way around. Actually, about 20% of adults are thought to have their main triggers from the workplace. So, depending on where you work, there may be things that you can do to help mitigate your exposure to those. If you work somewhere that there are pets around, or you know, if you're dealing with a lot of paper products or chemicals where things get stirred up frequently, you may just need to request to be moved or try humidifiers or other things to make sure that your environment is clean and free of as many irritants as possible. People who have asthma are at greater risk of serious illness from respiratory viruses like flu and COVID, and so they're on the list of people who we generally recommend treating if we feel like that person is at risk for having severe disease or long-term complications. You're also more at risk of severe illness or death from things like pneumonia and other bacterial infections. So we recommend routinely getting vaccinated for the things that are available and early intervention if you do have some sort of a respiratory infection. Meaning, call your doctor if you think you're sick because it's good to have someone listen to your lungs and see if you need medication earlier rather than later. We find that asthma is a significant percentage of doctor visits every year in the United States along with hospitalizations and sometimes deaths as well. So bottom line here, air good, not air bad. I hope 
they're teaching you kids that these days in school, but you just got a little wisdom from Dr. Mindy. So figure out if you may have asthma and let's come up with some plans to help avoid exacerbations in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more.